Welcome to Church of the Chair, where a shave and a haircut cost two bits, but I'm not on Twitch. I'm your host, E, and today we're talking about my favorite horror movies of all time, thanks to this comment on Discord from Solvents. Now, I thought I already did this video. I could have swore I did this video. In fact, I told Solvents that I had done this video. I had not done this video. I don't know how I've been on this channel doing lists for over seven years and somehow I missed this but anyways let's jump right into it some of these are gonna be well at least one of them is gonna be a franchise uh, I have them kinda split up into themes so uh, first off I'm gonna talk about my favorite horror franchise which might be a surprise to quite a few of you uh, because of the types of books I like to read but that would be the Saw franchise uh, I don't know why I like it as much as I do. I like every single one of these movies. Some are good. Some are absolutely fantastic. My favorite in the series would probably be Six. Um, and I get a lot of flack for saying that. Uh, but I do own the entire collection. Except for Spiral. I have not grabbed Spiral yet. Even though I do like it, I think it is a good Saw movie. Uh, and when people say that it's it's not, I, I, I question why. Because all the rest of the movies have the same bad acting. They have the same kind of plot. It's a good Saw movie. That's my opinion. You can have your own, of course. Uh, but what I like about it is uh, it, it's very on theme for my favorite horror movie of all time which we will get to in this list and we'll talk about that more when we get there uh and it might upset some people that's fine uh i have no problem with uh, with uh, upsetting people or people disagreeing with me but let's go go ahead and get on with the rest of the list and next next up we have my favorite vampire movies or my i don't want to say my favorite creature features but definitely favorite vampire movies uh this one is the lost boys uh, Joel Schumacher's best movie, in my opinion, number two would probably be The Wiz, but I love Joel Schumacher. Uh, I even love some of his lesser known, lesser appreciated works, like the number 23, uh, but Lost Boys is just an absolute classic, and it has to be on this list. Next up, we have, in the vampire category, 30 Days of Night. Uh, I'm a big fan of dour, sad endings, and this one checks all of those boxes. I watch this movie quite a bit. Um, I've seen it probably 20 30 times at, at at the very least i try to watch it at least twice a year but on top of that sometimes i just pop it in randomly uh, i can watch it back to back to back uh if if you haven't guessed i love vampires as monsters i'm not too into dracula interview with the vampire and certainly not twilight but um i have nothing against those things but I definitely prefer vampires as, you know, tearing, ripping, tearing, shredding, eating, that kind of vampire. I'm not out here trying to fuck a bloodsucker. So anyways, uh, 30 Days of Night is on this list as well. Also, there are 16, actually more than that when you count uh, one of these uh, collections is uh, five of the Saw films. But we're showing off uh, 16 different uh, mo uh, 16 different blu-rays and dvds today i guess it was next up is a movie not everyone's going to consider a horror movie but it has one of the most horrifying scenes in it uh that i've come across ever and that is running scared with paul walker uh the the couple the creepy couple in this one is it makes this one very high on the list and uh, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. If not, that's fine. Go watch the movie. Uh, it is a damn good thriller. It's got great action, suspense, all that stuff. But tucked into this is one of the scariest horror movie scenes I've ever come across. Next up, we have a movie that is... It's going to require multiple watchings for me to fully add it to this list but tentatively I also don't own it I watched it just last night which made me want to do this 
uh, series, uh, not series, but this video, uh, it's, it's a whole reason why I wanted to go ahead and get it out there. I will be reviewing it, but I'm saving my review for 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, there will be a lot of content that I'm going to be consuming over the next month or so that is going to go directly to 31 Days of Halloween. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Once again, we're doing a video every single day for October. That might not seem like something special, but in the past, I used to do maybe one or two videos a week and daily content in the past it just wasn't my thing. It is now. So we are going to continue the daily content till at least October 31st. Uh, next up would be, I think running scared is it has its own category, uh, maybe in the, the vein of, uh, horror movies that aren't considered horror movies. The next one, 100%, is religious trauma or religious uh, themed stories. And the first one is Frailty, Matthew McConaughey, uh, Bill Paxton. Absolutely fantastic movie, uh, lesser known movie. Um, it is, it's one of those that kind of rekindled the genre where uh, throughout the entire thing, you're thinking that a certain person is crazy. Um, and it turns out they are not crazy, that there is a supernatural element involved. If that is a, uh, if that's a spoiler, I apologize, but, uh, I just completely, I just re realized I completely skipped over the movie I was talking about. The movie that I, uh, Frailty is on the list, but the movie that I was talking about that I do not own is Cobweb. I just watched it last night. Absolutely fantastic movie from the producer, uh, of It and Barbarian, and it is now one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I watched it last night. I was on the edge of my seat throughout the entire thing. It was a little bit predictable, but I will have a full review up for you come October. It'll probably be October 1st because it's the first video I'm filming for 31 Days of Halloween. So yeah, Frailty's on there. Cobweb is on there. Moving on back to the religious stuff. Hereditary. And if you don't think this is a religious horror movie, you weren't paying attention. Uh, this is... Uh, uh, I, I really can't say enough about this movie. If you haven't seen it, you definitely need to check it out. Um, I'm not going into great detail on these, because like I said, I have 16 to talk about. But uh, if, you, if you want any individual reviews of these and they're not already up on the channel, be sure you check first. Let me know down there in the doobly-doo if you want individual uh, reviews of these. Uh, so Hereditary is absolutely perfection. Uh, I think that the way Ari Aster went about hiding the plot and hiding uh, details, breadcrumbs throughout the movie so that everything at the end came together. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. So yeah, Hereditary is definitely on this list. Midsummer is not, and I have not seen Bo is Afraid, although I do like Midsummer a lot. It's just not on this list. Uh, I'm going to skip over this one because that's my number one. Uh, it is in the religious category. Uh, those of you who've been following the channel already know what it is, but I'm going to talk about it more in depth when we get to it. Next up, we have Demon Knight. The, uh, this series of movies did not last long. We got Demon Knight, we got Bordello of Blood, and I believe we got one more before they finally stopped doing them. Billy Zane and Jada Pinkett Smith and William Sadler, all the people in this did an absolutely fantastic job, especially Billy Zane. It's one of his best performances. Um, I love everything about this movie. Uh, I, I tend to like the whole bounty hunter, supernatural bounty hunter genre in movies. I don't care about that stuff too much in books, although I did like Richard Codry's Sandman Slim series. But this one, as a standalone, is absolutely perfect, and I've been dying for a sequel that we will, at this point, never get. I mean, not even probably never get. I know we're not going to get a sequel to it, although I would love to see what Jada Pinkett Smith's character goes on to do. Of course, back then, she was just known as Jada Pinkett. Uh, next up, still on that religious bullshit, we are the, we, we have, not we are, uh, we have The Exorcist 3. This is on this list for one scene. Again, if you know, you know. It's that hallway scene, man. Nothing scarier. Uh, and a lot of these movies on here have that one scene thing in common, like Running Scared, uh, her hereditary, especially the, the, the telephone pole. Um, I would say, uh, Lost Boys, the scene, um, in, that's all painted red when they're out, uh, when they're eating the first time, uh, they come across, you know, the first time it's shown what they're capable of. Absolutely amazing. But anyways, yeah, the exorcist, uh, three, Especially, I'm not a huge fan of the first one. I respect it for what it did, what it did at the time, for how controversial it was. But I prefer this one 
far more than the original, and we shall not speak of part two. Next up, uh, we have two movies back-to-back -back by the same director, and I'm just calling them the John Carpenter category. We have Into... in Sorry, In the Mouth of Madness. Uh, Sam Neill... I, just, this movie's perfect. I, it doesn't get any, any better than this uh, as far as... I, I guess you could even lump this in with the uh, religious-themed. Uh, this is definitely more a uh, cult, supernatural kind of thing. A cult, not a cult. Uh, even though you can... Uh, I don't know. Is it a cult movie? It's definitely a cult classic. But is it a cult movie? Uh, I don't know. Let's talk about that down there in the doobly-doo. But yeah, a perfect film uh, from start to finish. This has some of the coolest stuff, especially... Uh, the thing that stands out for me is the bicycle. That scene especially bothers me. And every single time I watch it, even though I know what's coming and some of the special effects don't hold up today, it is still an absolutely perfect experience. Next up, we are back on John Carpenter. And you guys know what this is. Come on, you know what this is. It's Ghost of Mars. No, it's... <laughs> I do love that movie, but it's a thing. Uh, it's kind of obvious. And I guess uh, we're starting our sci-fi horror uh, additions to the, this list. The Thing is a classic. It can't be argued. Absolutely perfect film. Um, John Carpenter. I don't think John Carpenter has ever made a bad movie. And I stand. I stick by my guns with that one. Even with things like Ghosts. Ghost of Mars. I absolutely love that film. Not everything has to be taken seriously, even if the movie itself kind of takes itself seriously, but the concept, Ghosts on Mars, is absolutely amazing, and I love I love Ice Cube. I, I love everybody in the movie, but anyways, uh, we're talking about The Thing. The Thing, perfect sci-fi horror. It is, of course, uh, a remake of uh, The Thing, that whatever it's called, uh, and it's and that itself is an adaptation of a novella by uh, an author. I can't remember his name. I still haven't. Uh, who's out there? That's what it's called. Sorry. Who's out there is the name of the uh, of the novella. I have it. I bought it years ago for $16 because I couldn't find it anywhere else. Uh, but I'm going to read it eventually. If you want, guys want to see that for 31 Days of Halloween, a back-to-back -back review of this, or maybe in the same video, a review of this and that novella, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, next up in the sci-fi horror category, we have two, and these would probably be, no, the, the, the last two that I'm saying are definitely my top two of all time, but uh, we have Sunshine by Danny Boyle. Um, this one is, once again, lesser known, but it is absolutely amazing. It's got Cillian Murphy, or Killian Murphy, I'm sorry, I don't know which one it is. I've heard him called everything... Yeah, I've, I've heard him called both in, in interviews, but I don't know which one it is. It also has Chris Evans. Uh, it starts off as your typical sci-fi movie. Uh, the sun has gone out. They're trying to literally restart the sun with a with a megaton nuclear bomb kind of deal. Um, and Earth is, you know, failing slowly. Uh, and they're in space trying to get this thing done. I thought it was a very unique and original concept. About halfway through, it turns into a horror movie. Uh, almost to the, to the extent of a... It's not really a creature feature, but uh, to the extent of like a, a slasher. Like, almost supernatural but not quite uh the guy shouldn't have been able to live through what he lived through but here we are uh let fiction be fiction right uh this movie is hella fun it is rather long on the long side at least my memory says that uh the first half isn't anywhere near as engaging and suspenseful as the final half but uh yeah it, it's if you haven't seen it definitely check it out especially if you like my number two favorite movie of all time and that is Event Horizon. I actually own three different copies of this one. I have two DVDs. One of them is uh, an extend, not extended, but a uh, special edition. And the other one is just a regular ass, just regular DVD. This is the Blu-ray I got from Shout Factory. I really love the production quality. It's got uh, tons of new scenes that weren't even available in the special edition DVD. But uh, Event Horizon is the closest we have come to a movie adaptation of Stephen King's The Jaunt. And whether or not we get an adaptation of the jaunt or not, I consider this the closest we're ever going to get to it. Because uh, it's the same premise. Uh, some 
uh, you end up going, people end up going someplace they should never have been able to go, and when they come back, they're changed forever. Uh, but yeah, Event Horizon, Lawrence Fishburne, Sam Neill, so many wonderful actors in, in this one. I just realized how many, anyways, <laughs> I just realized that I have more than one movie uh, with Sam Neill in it that, uh, that, that are favorites of mine. I would even throw in Jurassic Park, but that's 100% not a horror movie, even though a lot of people consider it a horror movie. But Event Horizon, pitch perfect film. I love the production quality. Was it Paul W. at Paul W. Anderson? No, Paul W. S. Anderson. There's a Paul Anderson, Paul W. Anderson, and Paul W. S. Anderson, right? Or are any of those guys the same people? I don't know. Uh, I'm not. I'm not a director follower, but uh, I do love this guy's movies. Even the crappy Resident Evil movies, I love just because they're fun. Um, definitely nowhere near my favorites, but they're fun. So Event Horizon. Now let's talk about my favorite horror movie of all time. Here at the end, um, I consider this on par with Saw, and everybody considers Saw a horror movie. No one considers this a horror movie, and I might piss off some uh, some Christians, especially out there. This is The Passion of the Christ is my favorite horror movie of all time. If you watch it in the same way that you watch Saw, it's pretty much the same thing. Someone torturing someone for what they think is the betterment of humankind uh, or teaching a lesson, uh, it, it's the same movie. It's just Saw uh, 1.5 or whatever. Uh, the production quality, everything, and I know Mel Gibson and Jim Caviezel have both gone batshit crazy, uh, but this is still, if you, as long as you don't watch this movie as factual evidence of something, uh, then I, th I think you'll enjoy it far more as a horror movie, especially if you're into movies like Hostel, Saw, any of those that fall into the torture porn uh, category, because, I mean, what else is this other than torture porn? Um, but I've watched this numerous times. I own the deluxe special edition Blu-ray. I own a regular Blu-ray copy of it. And I own this one that uh, was inherited from my mother. My mother, of course, liked it as a testament to uh, her religion. But uh, and, I, I, I'm not going to get into that here. But uh, yeah, favorite horror movie of all time. Anytime I'm into... Anytime I feel like feeling uncomfortable, and yes, I do get those moments, I'm sure some of you out there do too, where you want to watch something that makes you feel uncomfortable, just like an ASMR video, that's pretty much why those are so popular, because people like feeling uncomfortable, it scratches certain parts of the brain that normally don't get scratched. This is what I watch. I watch the entire thing, all of it, and the devil in this, Satan, is an absolutely amazing representation of that story, uh, of, of that character's story. The uh, how beautiful and sinister, and that creepy little man baby person that is that's what uh, I mean. Come on, it's a horror movie. I don't care what you say, it's a horror movie. And if you like this for other reasons, I might actually judge you. But, anyways, this is uh, The Passion of the Christ, favorite horror movie of all time. Uh, definitely up there with Saw and Hostel and all that stuff. Uh, but since this is a discussion video, I want you guys out there in the world to let me know what your favorite horror movies are. I would especially like to hear from you what horror movies that you like that people don't consider horror movies. I think that. Uh, I firmly believe that horror is in everything, whether it be romance, drama, comedy, there's horror in everything because horror is conflict, horror is dread, and if the writing is good, there's an element of horror because you're, you're feeling dread for a certain character, you don't want anything bad to happen to them, and that's what horror should be, you know, you, you taking, you, you watching or reading something that you want that person to succeed, but at the same time, there's so much in their way, and I find that to be horrifying. I find that the dread that comes with any lovable character being in trouble, no matter what that trouble might be, should be labeled horror, and that's why I say horror, every genre, has horror elements. Uh, but that's all the time I have for you today. Uh, I know you, some of you guys like the longer videos, so here here is one where I talk about 16 different movies. Uh, and I would love to hear yours down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, all hail the chair.